Hey everyone, I'm Sean Morley, and today we're gonna make a coffee table leg using our indexable fourth axis. All right, when I got started in woodworking about 25 years ago, I really got into turning. I was making pens, bowls, plates, um, all kinds of things. Spindles, of course, much like we made in our last video. Those are all pretty simple to do on a standard lathe. Now, if you wanna get into really complex things, the addition to the indexable fourth axis on Shop Saver CNC, we can do some really complex turnings where it's gonna stop, it's gonna add things, you could put lettering in it, all kinds of neat stuff. So with that being said, why don't we run over to the computer, I'll show you in Aspire what we're gonna to create today. All right, we've got a spire opened up. Now I'm gonna open our file. If you remember last fourth axis project, we just created a simple spindle. In this case, I purchased one, and you're gonna see why in a second. Uh, I'm gonna change the size that we're gonna work with here. And it should pop up, there it is. Uh, the only thing I gotta do here is adjust the size of what we're going to we'll scale it down. I'm gonna switch it to three and a quarter, and we're hit okay. Now, if you take a look at this, you can see the complexity of it. You can see why I didn't wanna spend the time to create it. And you can also see how having an indexable head, you can create this as opposed to a standard lathe. If, with a standard lathe, we would have to sit there and carve all this out, and uh, it'd be definitely unique. I wouldn't be able to do as good as the uh, machine would. Let's move on to creating our tool path, the last thing we got to do. We're going to use a tapered eighth inch ball nose. We can look at our settings for this, 18,000 RPM, 325 inches a minute, and a plunge rate of 200. And we'll just calculate it, and we're all set. We'll save it, and we'll be able to go over to the machine and cut. So why don't we get started? All right, now that you've seen what we're going to make, Let's talk a little bit of how we're fixing this. If you saw our, our last video on the fourth axis, we created this jig. You know, it's something that is a little bit easier to do. If you're not gonna use your fourth axis all the time, this is a nice way to go about it. We do have to use the vacuum though to hold this down. A lot of other guys will use the T-slots on the table. Some that use it a lot, they'll even set up a way to fix it right to it. Big advantage there is you don't need to run your vacuum then. So. Anyway, let's move on, we'll, we'll put our uh, stock in. We're just gonna use the same leftover piece of cedar we used last time. Get that engaged, we'll tighten that up. Now I'll go over to the tail stock here and put that in. Tighten that up, we're good to go. Now that we're set, let's show you the advantages of the fourth axis indexable head here.
All right, we got our fourth axis turning all done. Real happy with how it turned out. As I mentioned before, we used the fall off from our last video, just a cedar post I picked up from Home Depot. Not the best thing to carve, you know, it, it, cedar's gonna leave a little bit of fuzzies out there and a little more cleaning up to do. It's not what I would pick if I really was gonna use this for a project, but as an example, it works really well and it's an inexpensive. If for a real project, I'd probably go walnut, maybe mahogany, something that carves more like butter, it's real easy. You know, this shows how simple it can be done. We bought the file online, we threw it in a spire, got everything loaded up, and it took about two hours to cut. So all in all, pretty simple, pretty quick. So if you're interested in more projects like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want information on the fourth axis to add to your machine, check us out at shopsyrebro.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching.